Yulia Navalnaya, the widow of leading Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny, has accused Vladimir Putin of killing her husband, who died in an Arctic penal colony last week. She called on supporters to resist Vladimir Putin and fight for what she called a free Russia. But voicing opposition in Russia can be dangerous. More than 400 people have been arrested in 30 cities for paying their final respects by laying flowers, candles or effigies there. Many have been fined or even imprisoned for several days. Mourners continue to place flowers and pictures of Alexei Navalny on makeshift memorials in St. Petersburg. Before they are swiftly removed by authorities. Here in Moscow, the tributes also continue. People are coming to pay their respects in Lubyanka Square, once homed to the feared KGB, and still the headquarters of Russia's secret police. It's a place full of symbolism, as people once again risk arrest for expressing themselves. It was scary to come here because there are a lot of videos online of police detaining people. Grief, sadness. I cried non-stop for the first two days and have plenty of anger that things turn out like this, that they're killing people like this. And this has happened before. This is a real horror. He was the strongest politician in Russia, someone who knew how to motivate people to join in the resistance. I couldn't say that I agreed with him on everything, but what he used to do was real politics, and it was what was really needed to be done in Russia, I think. As supporters of Navalny continue to process their grief, there are still questions surrounding the exact cause of his death. Many Western politicians accuse Russian President Vladimir Putin of being behind Navalny's death, allegations that the Kremlin has called unacceptable. Navalny's mother, Lyudmila Navalnaya, was seen visiting a morgue in Russia's far north where his body is believed to be held. She said she was denied access to her son for the third day in a row. Um, Navalny's team expressed their suspicions about what authorities are calling an ongoing autopsy. The investigation will last at least two weeks. They are going to prolong the inspection as long as it suits them, obviously at least until after the presidential elections. With his political opponents imprisoned, disqualified or dead, Putin is predicted to win the upcoming elections by a landslide. Yulia Navalnaya has meanwhile taken her message to the European Union. She's told officials there that need, they need to increase their sanctions on the Russian government. But she's also been urging them to give greater support to those in Russia who oppose the government of Vladimir Putin. She arrived in Brussels with a clear message. Putin is not Russia and Russia is not Putin, Yulia Navalnaya told the EU foreign ministers, calling for tougher measures against the Kremlin, but also for more support for the country's civil society. She did not address the media afterwards, but ahead of her visit, she published a video message on social media. I will continue Alexei Navalny's cause to fight for our country with you. And I call on you to stand beside me, to share not only the grief and the endless pain that envelops us and does not let go. I ask you to share with me the rage, the fury, the anger, the hatred for those who dare to kill our future. The Kremlin has denied any involvement in Navalny's death at a penal colony north of the Arctic Circle. But for the EU, there is no doubt that Putin's regime is responsible and that it's imperative to hold the Russian leadership and the authorities to account.
im Lichte dieses Sanktionssystems. In light of the sanction system, the death of Alexei Navalny will of course not only continue to concern us, but we will also introduce further sanctions accordingly. Every time an opposition member is killed in, in Russia, Europe had uh, sanction packages. Now, I mean, it's, it's the very least that we, that we could do and then demand of, you know, the release of, of his body and a proper, proper burial. The EU has already imposed heavy sanctions on Moscow, including on Putin, over the war in Ukraine. Officials concede it may be difficult to take further action. EU top diplomat Josef Borrell has also suggested a symbolic gesture to honor Navalny's memory. I have proposed to the ministers to rename our global human rights sanctions regime with his name. And now it will be called the Navalny regime on global human rights sanctions. Experts such as policy analyst Maria Martusiut say the EU should do more to back Putin's opponents. To encourage through them uh, those voices in Russia who are scared, but who are perhaps 20-30% uh, of, of Russian population who would actually uh, identify with what Navalny has been doing or other political activists but have no way of being heard. Yulia Navalnaya has vowed to continue her husband's work and she is counting on the EU to support her. And for more, I'm joined now by DW's Brussels Bureau Chief, Alexandra von Nahmen. Alexandra, tell us more about um, today's meetings. Will more sanctions be coming Russia's way? Well, that is certainly what the European Union is aiming for. We heard from Josep Borrell, the EU foreign policy chief. We also heard from a number of uh, foreign ministers, all of them stressing that it is important to hold to account, into account those responsible for Alexei Navalny's death. And Josep Borrell, during his press conference, used a very strong language saying that Navalny was slowly murdered in a Russian jail by Putin's regime. So they are planning sanctions against the Russian leadership and also about the authorities, presumably the authorities at the prison where Navalny was held in custody. However, this process will take a bit of time. And of course, they first want to wait whether there will be any investigation. The EU is calling for an international investigation investigation and to impose sanction then sanctions then they need to have solid evidence that those on a sanctions list are really responsible for Navalny's death so it will take a while uh, today however the EU foreign ministers agreed as we just heard from Josef Borrell that they are ready to rename an already existing sanctions regime for human rights uh, abuses and uh, they want to do it to honour Alexei Navalny. And what message did Yulia Navalnaya's uh, presence at those meetings in Brussels today send? I think it was quite remarkable uh, that uh, she told the EU foreign ministers that Russia is not Putin and Putin is not Russia. So. She not only called on the EU to get tougher on the Kremlin and to impose more sanctions, she also made clear that the European Union has to support, to increase their support for uh, the opposition in Russia, for the civil society in Russia. Uh, we saw that people who were taking to the streets to honor Alexei Navalny, that they were detained. We know that a number of opposition figures, people who worked very closely with Navalny together are still in custody. So I think that was her message to the EU foreign uh, ministers here in Brussels. DW's Brussels bureau chief, Alexandra von Nahmen. Alexandra, thank you so much. Thank you.